the first question that I have for you as someone who um, treats patients with myasthenia gravis is how would you currently assess the state of care for these patients? Uh, which areas do we excel at the most in providing care? Well, I just wrote a piece for an internal publication called Brainwaves, uh, which is a publication of the Neuroscience Institute at AHN. And um, I tried to write it in a, in a fairly friendly, light manner, because I think the target audience for that are patients and their families. And uh, I started with a phrase that may seem disconcerting. I said, there's never been a better time uh, on this planet to have myasthenia gravis than now, which sounds a little odd since it is a chronic disease, since no one is ever cured of it 100%. The definition of cure that we use is minimal manifestation disease. It's a disease that causes potentially disabling weakness, particularly of muscles at the neck or above the neck with double vision and or swallowing or speech problems. And it could get bad enough that it could cause breathing problems enough for people to be on ventilators. Um, it's an autoimmune disease. It's the most common autoimmune disease in neurology just like you would think of lupus or you would think of rheumatoid arthritis and so forth, it's treated with some of the similar drugs. Um, and about 80% of patients can be treated with simple uh, therapy with pills. They see their doctor once in a while, their symptoms are managed, if not 100% perfectly, except to the point where they could carry out their uh, activities of daily living, meaning live a normal life, but they sort of know they have the problem. There are a good 20%, however, who will occasionally go through bouts where they might not be able to walk, they might choke, which is dangerous, and they might require mechanical ventilation. A distinct minimum of people will go on to require a chronic ventilatory assistance or breathing problems. I like to um, uh, differentiate it from uh, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease for which there is still a tremendous amount of research. And I would never say this is the best time in the world to have ALS. That really is not the right way to describe it. Myasthenia gravis should not cause the death of anybody. Um, myasthenia gravis is mentioned about 80% of the time can be handled with some pills and doctor visits here and there. People keeping an eye on warning signs about breathing and swallowing. Going to their medical provider, if they have any worsening symptoms in that uh, sphere and to wear a medic alert badge uh, because it's not the most common disease in the world. It's considered an or orphan disease because there are fewer than 50,000 people in the United States with it. The landscape of myasthenia treatment has exploded, has burgeoned since about 2018 approximately when the drugs called complement inhibiting drugs, the first drug uh, got approved who used that mechanism of action. And that drug's name is Solaris, which is the trade name, or Eculizumab, which is the generic name. It has other uses uh, in medicine for certain kidney diseases uh, that are rare. And it is FDA approved for adult patients with generalized myasthenia gravis, that is, not myasthenia gravis that just affects the eyes, but other parts of the body. Um, we have experience with that here at AHN, myself and my partners using it. It's uh, administered every two weeks as an intravenous. Uh, there are almost no side effects during the treatment. Um, one requires it every two weeks though, and technically it's lifetime, it doesn't have to be. The drug company that produces it has come out with another drug called Ultimaris, which is a long acting version of the Solaris, so to speak, and requires infusions every eight weeks. And we've dosed our first patient with it in the last few weeks. It got approved in May. And so uh, the short acting version was about 2018. The uh, longer acting version in uh, 2022, and between the two, in December of 2021, another drug called Fgartigamod or Vivgart came out, which is also an intravenous drug that's administered in cycles of once a week intravenous uh, for four weeks. And then the 
doctor makes a decision whether other cycles are needed. And we have experience with that drug as well. We have many of these drugs without side effects during administration. They potentially have side effects, which I can go into. Um, and I've been very happy with the results from both of these medications. I think these two medications and the uh, second version of the first medication I mentioned are the only FDA approved drugs for myasthenia that have come out in the last 30 years. Right. And they've come out within several years of one another. And since uh, we're in a sense blessed to have a community of doctors here at Allegheny General Hospital, particularly myself, interested in treating myasthenia gravis because we happen to have collected two to 300 patients with a disorder, which is a lot of patients for an orphan disease. And in tandem with the Myasthenia Gravis Association of Western Pennsylvania, which had had a management services agreement with Allegheny Health System and had actually uh, uh, had a clinic uh, where they participated, which has since dissolved, but the organization still exists as a information organization. And there's a telephone number uh, that can that's associated with uh, those individuals who are lay people, but who know about MG. They have a loose association with the National Myasthenia Gravis Foundation of America, of which I'm a board member. And uh, it's just the right time, in a sense, to come to Allegheny Health System if you happen to have this disorder because of our experience. I've had 30 years experience treating myasthenia gravis here at AHN uh, with other drugs in the beginning, frequently steroids, uh, which are used for many other disorders that are rheumatologic. Um, we have the intensive care capabilities that uh, people go south and have problems breathing, which is a minority of patients. And we also have the expertise in the office with nurses and support staff uh, for proper follow-up and support of these patients. So it's not it's it's a good time to have expertise in MG because we are putting it to good use, uh, that expertise in providing it to our patients immediately. The horizon of patients, of doctors, that is, with neuromuscular disease experience, excuse me, with uh, neuromuscular disease experience um, has dwindled in Western Pennsylvania. A number of people at other hospitals uh, at, uh, in uh, Pittsburgh have lost their neuromuscular clinicians. They've retired or moved away. And there hasn't been a resupply of them. So the fact that Dr. Rana, who runs our ALS clinic and also runs our residency program, is highly skilled and expert in treating myasthenia gravis and myself are available for this, uh, we're ready to go at AHN. And we are treating people with state-of-the-art therapies, and we have state-of-the-art support systems for them in these challenging times. 